Hello, this is Rob Hirschfeld, and welcome to the prequel for our Terraform demo. Uh, this is me going through the environment to set it up, so I don't want to take you through this if you're watching the Terraform demo. We're, that jumps right to it. We clap in the middle of it, sorry. And uh, what we're doing is we're just setting up the environment. So I've already got a machine spun up in Packet, but I haven't done anything else. It's just a standard CentOS Type 0. Uh, I can grab its IP address. I can go into an SSH session over here, SSH to root at that IP address, and log in. So now I have a machine to play with. I don't have, I haven't done anything. So we're going to go to Digital Rebar's website. We're going to scroll past all this interesting, informative text, jump straight to our quick start. And in our quick start, I'm going to build, this is using version 3.2, which we just cut a couple of days ago. So I'm just going to pull stable, which is right here. If you're a little further in the release cycle, sometimes people like to use tip, which means pulling from here. Uh, but in this case, stable. And uh, if I removed isolated, it would install this as a, uh, as a daemon uh, using systemd. I don't need to do that uh, for this demo. I'm just going to jump straight through, do the exciting uh, defaults, and run it in, in process, because this demo will be done in 30 minutes or so and I'll destroy all the all the resources. Uh, takes a little bit of time, maybe a minute, to download these pieces. Um, one of the new features that's coming in uh, is the ability to not even download ISOs. So you can point um, to internal repos or internet repos and eliminate this next step which is uploading the ISOs. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, I'm going to start the digital rebar provision um, and it'll run in the background with this. Uh, so basically the system's up and running at this point. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of background work. I need uh, these three operating systems. Sledgehammer is our base discovery image. And with that one started, I can actually go in to the website and let's see, let's go get things running. Good. So um, that's the IP address. 8092 is the uh, service port for the API, and that will redirect me automatically to the UX uh, hosted by RackN and then run out of the system. Uh, Digital Rebar runs completely standalone, um, air gapped in your data center, wherever you need it to run on the edge. Uh, the UX uh, is hosted by RackN and then points uh, directly to the endpoint. We do not have any control loop to the endpoints. So now I have the system running. This is uh, Digital Rebar going in a completely empty environment. Uh, I already uploaded that Sledgehammer instance, uh, which means I've got some stages uh, ready, the discovery stages. But for this demo to really work, we need to get um, a couple of the other ones so you can see all my UX transactions. I'm going to want uh, CentOS, so I'll do that one. I'm hitting center click, so it's pasting it in. Uh, and we'll let that upload, and then we're going to get this one next. So copy down here. I'm going to let that finish. I could uh, layer them on top of each other, but I'm just a little bit more cautious when I'm recording a demo. Um, and so now that we've got that base, I can do the next step. So there's no uh, subnet, so I don't have to worry about that. We're going to go in, and I have to go to System Preferences, and instead of telling Digital Rebar to ignore everything. I need to tell it to, hey, we want to boot a discovery image uh, if we don't know what it is. And that discovery image should include Sledgehammer. And our default stage here is Discover. So this is basically saying, hey, if there's if you get a machine you don't know anything about, give it the discovery image. And I have to save that. And at this point, um, I could actually start booting a machine. It would go straight into Discovery. Uh, and that would be pretty handy. On one second. Uh, we're going to upload Ubuntu also. So I'm doing all these things in the background. Um, it's not necessarily obvious what that means. What, what's happening here is I'm bringing in um, ISOs for booting. Those ISOs are tied to boot environments. So I can now boot cent, CentOS Ubuntu. It's not all the way uploaded. You'll see if I click here, it'll tell me I'm missing the ISO. That's, and that's what I'm doing. Uh, and it'll turn into a checkbox as soon as that's completed. Uh, so you don't have to have these in advance. Um, so that's that's pretty good right there. Um, and then that, once the boot are enabled, then the uh, different stages are 
enabled. A stage is different than a boot dev. Boot dev is actually an operating environment. A stage is part of the workflows that uh, Digital Rebar enables. So for example, if I was going to go build a uh, workflow, so here's my workflow. Uh, this is a 3-2 feature. Um, I can take my profile. Profiles are ways to group machines and parameters. But I have a global one I can use for this case. And I'm going to say, I'm going to build a little workflow that says if you get a machine that's discovered, I want you to uh, install packet SSH keys, which are not here. So that means I'm not quite ready to do this next step. I'm going to jump away from it. I have to go in and say, wow, I need a little bit of extra content. Whoops, that was the wrong button. I meant to click this button. Uh, for these demos, uh, we really recommend creating a Rackin login account. It costs nothing. It has no financial obligation, but it does enable you to see additional content. Uh, Terraform is part of that content. So what I need here is I need the Terraform uh, content. Oops, that's a preview. I didn't mean the preview. Uh, the Terraform content. And I also want to see, let's see. There's a couple other pieces. Sometimes you don't see them uh, by default. Uh, I need the task library. So let me add that into my system. And I need Terraform. Should see Terraform. All right, so I'm going to get Terraform in here. All right, and back over to my the content. Oops, no, 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 sorry. Back into the endpoint. I want to go over to the content. All right, over into the content. I'm going to need the task library. Uh, this is part of the workflow that is enabled with Terraform. And I'm not doing Kubernetes this time. I'm pretty good. I will need a plugin because I'm on packet doing the demo. So I need the packet plugin. So there's a couple of pieces. Um, that I have to have to make all this stuff go. If you're watching, the, if you watch the Terraform demo, all this was in there, and we just assumed that you'd already done these steps. Uh, so with those extra pieces, I can jump over into the workflow stages. I can create one that goes from discover to packet SSH keys. That'll allow me to log into the box. And then from packet SSH, I'm going to want to get into um, Terraform Ready. Let's see, so I add that step. So now, when a system is discovered, that's what we set up in the base environment. It will automatically go to discover. The system's going to say, whoa, after I'm discovered, advance me to packet SSH, advance me to Terraform Ready. So this will install SSH keys so I can access the servers, and this will set the Terraform parameters on a node so that I can manage them with Terraform. All pretty straightforward, very handy. Um, so that's a good starting point, and at this at this at this step, I am ready to start booting some packet machines. So let's make this happen. So to do that, I, I want my IP address. I'm going to create some new machines into this uh, into this group. This is my my home group. This looks great. Uh, we will call this T T F demo one. We'll give it a type zero. It's fine. Sense 7, we're going to go into Poughkeepsie, that's where my current server is. Oh, uh, it's not Poughkeepsie, I always say Poughkeepsie, it's uh, Persepanini, I, I think. Uh, place names in New Jersey are not my strong suit. Um, and I need to turn on, sorry, uh, it's not Sense 7, I'm moving too fast, it's custom my Pixie. Sorry if you're watching at home and shouting at me. Uh, 8091. So right now I'm just directing it to the server on the HTTP port and then telling it default.ipixie. So that's going to tell it to manage, do an ipixie service. And then I'm going to say, I want to keep booting an ipixie. So uh, this is directing it to this digital rebar server in that data center and it's saying to use default ipixie. You only have to do this um, if you're doing something like packet where you're you're running it, uh, going directly to iPixie. If you're doing DHCP and then TFTP boots, it, that you don't that'll all be inferred from the DHCP server. All right, so I, I picked three servers. Uh, this demo needs three servers because uh, that's what my default Terraform file has. 
and I'm going to go ahead and run these. Um, if I went to this site, you would just see the default IPixie instructions, uh, which is exactly what you, which is what IPixie needs to take the next steps and be managed by Digital Rebar. So I'm not quite done with Digital Rebar here yet. Um, I have a couple of things I need to do yet. Um, one of them is to go in and actually put in my packet keys and create my plugins. So in this case, when I added the plugin, we added packet IPMI. That's not enough to enable it. I have to actually turn on that plugin from the provider because a plugin is um, this is an instance of the provider. So here's packet. I'm going to use that provider. Pretty straightforward. And to make that work, I have to have the uh, packet API string, which you don't really need to see, um, and is happily password um, enabled. So we're going to go over into a different, a different window and pick my uh, key and then put it in here. That's excellent. And add it. This will then allow me to have power control. Uh, the, the Terraform provider assumes that you can reboot machines um, and start them, and so we're gonna we need to use a system, a digital rebar system that has some IPMI drivers, whether it's VirtualBox, actual IPMI, or in this case, packet IPMI. So if I've been doing everything right, then I should have machines showing up in here pretty soon from this workflow. While we're waiting, I'm gonna build some extra workflow. Uh, because what I know I want to do is when Sense7 boots, then I want to go through... Oops, sorry, this is actually incorrect. Uh, boy, I'm glad we're catching this. All right, so I want to go to Discover. Then I want to go to Packet Discover. All right, Packet Discover then goes to Terraform Ready. Bingo. So Packet Discover sets up the Packet API keys when the machine boots. So that's the difference. Packet SSH just does SSH Packet. Discover sets up the packet GUID and packet discover and then Terraform ready and then so from here when we do a sense 7 install then we want to do our packet SSH keys that's what made me think of it and then from my packet SSH keys I am going to go into my runner service that's going to let the system wait through a reboot and then from my runner service I want to do a let's see uh, finish install. Uh, so this will wait. This is part of the, that wait process. Uh, good. Uh, let's see. And then that, right, okay. So it's going to stop. And then from finish install, I need to go into complete and success. Okay, so this builds my workflow for Sense 7. I want to do the same thing for uh, Ubuntu. I actually probably should. This is this will be in the Terraform video, uh, which is really where it's more important. If I do packet SSH, in this case, I'm going to get it'll just pick up. So this is actually uh, two starts to the same same workflow. And at this point, yay! I now have machines. They've already workflowed all the way through to Terraform Ready. And if I did this, if I cut it in time, I did, you would now see your packet GUID. This is what the packet discover does. You're going to see our Terraform allocated and Terraform managed flags. This is what Terraform Ready does. And Go High Inventory is a standard. It just inventories the box with a whole bunch of amazing cool data uh, that we dump into the, the machine parameters. Um, and so at this point, I am, I think, ready to go. Let's check a couple of things. Uh, let's see, bulk adds, all that looks good. It put us in packet, so we know our packet. Um, I've got our plugins. I can test power, so why don't I do that just to make sure everything's happy. I'm going to set the stage back to discover. Good, so you can see that changed. And then I'm going to power cycle them. So we're doing that. You see we're getting little indications. And with packet, let me refresh these screens. Let's see. Oops, I don't have any servers to deploy. Let me go back into our different zones. Yay, we have lots of servers. And oh, they already rebooted, so I missed the the window where these things went. But that'll if this is if this is working correctly, then my reboot cycles will 
should be here. I should be able to watch them. They're not that fast. So console, copy this over. Get a new window. Um, and so in this case, I'm just waiting for those machines to reboot. It's a little bit of icing, just making sure that everything's uh, copacetic for uh, this the demo uh, that I'm going to record. Because uh, those are the things that I need to be able to do. Whoops, did I, did I miss it? Yep, there you go. So here's the machine actually booting from that reboot I issued. Um, you know, obviously you can use Packets API to, to do these commands too. We're, we're doing it because it's really handy uh, to be able to completely simulate a physical machine down to the IPMI instructions that we would issue against a real server against one of Packets API servers. Uh, so we get complete ability to demo and test all the workflows that we would enable in the data center using transactional uh, temporary servers with packet. It's really, really fun, cool. So at this point, uh, let's see, I think we've got everything going. We've got machines, we've got the plugin, we got the right boot environments available, uh, we've got the stages we needed, and we've got a workflow built, uh, and I've got all the right content downloaded. So we are primed to go. Um, if you're watching this, then hang on for the Terraform demo I'm gonna record in a couple minutes. Um, or if you watch a Terraform demo and you're really excited about this, uh, which you should be because this is amazing amounts of, of capability and functionality for physical data centers and it's really easy to learn and use, give us a call at RackN. Uh, we're happy to help you um, and get started with the project. So once again, digital rebar for the project, RackN, and I'm your host, Rob Hirschfeld. Thanks for taking the time.